Welcome to another episode of Worldview, the foreign policy show from Hindustan Times. And we have a very special guest with us today, former Ambassador Talmiz Ahmed. And uh, the reason we have him in here is because we are going to take a look at India-Saudi Arabia ties ahead of the visit of Prime Minister Modi to Saudi Arabia. Uh, welcome to the show, Thank Ambassador. You. Thank you. Uh, can we just have a quick overview of the India-Saudi Arabia relationship over the years? Uh, I mean, given the fact that you served as the envoy there twice. Indo-Saudi relations acquired a political content with the visit in 2001 of Foreign Minister Jaswant Singh. At that time, the kingdom made it clear that they value ties with India on their own merit and will not look at India through the prism of their relations with any other country an obvious reference to Pakistan, which had till then dominated the discourse. Since then, the relationship has progressed. We had the visit to India of the King, uh, you know, Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz in 2006 as our guest at Republic Day. And there was a return visit of uh, then Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh in February 2010. In that period, we were able to shift our relationship from a strategic energy partnership into a strategic partnership and we became very we then had very close ties in regard to counter-terrorism that brought us together and we had a common concern emanating from the Mumbai attack with regard to the proliferation of extremist violence in our region emanating from Pakistan and uh, since then the relationship has blossomed and I think that it could be said accurately that uh, that the Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, has taken the relationship forward. He has been extremely robust in terms of his interaction with the Gulf countries over the last uh, uh, five, six years. And I think that we can look forward to a very substantial relationship now. How has this paid off, you know, this current government's uh, focus on the Gulf, you know, especially with UAE and Saudi Arabia? What are, what are the dividends for I India? I personally feel as of now, the broad focus of the ties remains bilateral and transactional. What I had hoped is that given the frequency of the interaction, the substance of the relationships and the vision of a strategic partnership, that we would be able to go forward with a broader vision of our ties. But what I have seen instead, to my personal disappointment, is that the relationship remains bilateral and transactional. Uh, I, I have not given up. The region is in very serious uh, distress. Uh, there is a lot of tension in the region, ongoing proxy conflicts in Syria and Yemen, and serious long-term Indian interests are at stake. Yeah, we, I have do. Huge, uh, we have a huge, we have a huge community, community of eight and a really? half million. Yeah, yeah. We are dependent on the region for our energy security. Uh, they are our investment partners, our trade partners. We have logistical connectivity projects through, through the Iranian port of Chabahar. We cannot, to my mind, any longer afford to sit back and imagine that we can do business as usual. What do you uh, think are going to be the important uh, things that are going to come up when Prime Minister Modi goes to Riyadh? I mean, it's going to be a one-day visit, uh, technically. Yes. But Prime Minister is going to, uh, uh, you know, that he is going for an investment summit and a lot of very important uh, participation uh, is taking place. I think that there's a high-level delegation from the United States as well. Uh, most countries see a great value with regard to the uh, Saudi potential. Uh, they have a lot of multi-billion dollar projects that are envisaged by them. We have a special reason to be linked with the kingdom. Uh, we have had uh, historical relations. Uh, we have a very large Indian Muslim community that participates in the Hajj and the Umrah. We have the largest overseas Indian community abroad, Indian passport holding community, more than 3 million living in Saudi Arabia. Collectively, our GCC community sends home about $35 billion. And obviously, Saudi Arabia has promised to invest in India to the extent of $100 billion. So if we take first things first, I would imagine that investment would be something that we would look at. Not that there is anything happening. The kind of business environment that they were looking for in India has not yet happened. 
So you must have seen that foreign investment in India, while there is a lot of interest, has not actually translated into actual projects. We simply, we simply are not able to go. Uh, we are not able to provide the opportunities not and ourselves. the openness. Uh, we don't. We have a long way to go. This has been the case for some time. The offer from the Saudi side is on the table. But there is another thing that we should be looking at, which I have seen no evidence of up to now. And that is, what is to be done about the deteriorating security scenario? There is a confrontation between Saudi Arabia and Iran. It has had, it has a military dimension. You spoke about the way the relationship has changed between India and Saudi Arabia, and especially in the field of security. Now, this is an area which has the overhang of Pakistan. Yeah. For a long time, the, it was perceived that the Pakistanis had a stronger security relationship with the Saudis. Were you surprised by the thing, the way things have changed about how people are now being extradited from Saudi Arabia or UAE to India? But that's not something recent. Okay. That's been going. I would go back a bit. Our relationship changed qualitatively after the Mumbai assault in 2008. For the first time, the top leadership realized that there is a threat of extremism emanating from Pakistan. This has nothing to do with the issue of Jammu and Kashmir that they had been told by the Pakistanis. This is jihad. And this is jihad that is ruthless. It does not respect any national borders. And that today, if India is jeopardized, what about all these other countries that have long coastlines and indeed are extremely close to Karachi? So it is at that stage that you find that our, that our economic and energy-based partnership became a strategic partnership. And that happened with Dr. Manmohan Singh's visit. We had the Riyadh Declaration that had as its uh, subheading a new era of strategic partnership founded on counter-terrorism. Since then, I think, now, uh, nearly 10 years later, we should go forward. The situation has deteriorated, not improved. Uh, they are happy to work with us. They are keen to work with us. But it cannot be any longer bilateral and transactional. Pakistan is not significant in this regard. Pakistan has its own role to play. It plays a role that is quite different. It is linked with their historical connectivity during the Cold War and beyond. They provide a modicum of security to these regimes, which India is not keen to do and not willing to do. Our role has to be diplomatic. We bring a certain capacity, a certain gravitas to the table that Pakistan is not able to do and doesn't have the, credibi and doesn't have the credibility. So I think there is no zero-sum scenario here. Pakistan will play its role. Pakistan is committed to defending these countries if they are attacked. No such possibility exists for the time being. But the fact is that this is the role they are enjoined to play. As far as we are concerned, what we should be promoting is security. Security in the region, given the close relationship we have. And I want to add one more point in this regard. The United States has played a very dangerous role in the region. It has played a very destructive role in the region. Hundreds of thousands of people have been killed as a result of U.S. interventions. I believe that with the retreat of the U.S. from its military role in the region, a new space has emerged for diplomatic activity. Which, and India should lead that diplomatic yeah, Which activity. India should capitalize on. Should India should capitalize on, take advantage of. I think the times for the U.S. hegemony are gone. And it is now something that we should assume responsibility for. That's what Trump has said and that's what Obama said earlier. Yeah. That regional states should assume responsibility for regional security. And this is what we should be doing. I cannot criticize an American role if I'm not able to do a role right. myself. Yeah. You know, uh, pursue a role for myself. Absolutely. So this is something. And India has crucial interests, more valuable interests than the Americans have. Yeah. So I think that is where the opportunity has arisen. And this is what the Prime Minister should be really pursuing. I'm not saying it should be a public role. It should be behind the scenes diplomatic role, possibly at the role uh, at the level of Foreign Secretary or National Security Advisor in the first instance. Ambassador Ahmed, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. My pleasure entirely. Thank you.